Today I'm going to show you how I easily gain match audio before and after a plugin to make sure that the volume is similar. This is to make sure that when I'm doing something and I'm bypassing and comparing that my ear is not getting skewed by an actual volume decrease or increase. This is super important especially when you're compressing or using effects that are more kind of subtle with the tone I guess like obviously if you boost an EQ high shelf like you hear that and it's pretty easy to hear whereas compression could be more subtle so making sure that the volume is the same is critical. I'm using Studio One but this works with any door so let's go. Hey, I'm Nick Rollo. I'm a producer and mixing engineer from Australia. Welcome to the channel. If you find this helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell. It helps me out a tremendous amount. If you use Studio One, there's a link below that takes you to my store where you can get some free Studio One presets. Uh, at the moment, there's two or three that you can get for free. I'm planning on uploading a lot more and I'll be updating them. These are just like macro kind of vibe presets that allow you to get a nice kind of sound very quickly. I think it's particularly helpful if you're a beginner, but you can definitely use it if you're past that point as well. I don't think I have anything else to say here, so let's go over there. Okay, I'm re-recording this part of the video the day after the first part. I had some weird audio issue happening. Um, my guitar amp was making a terrible noise that I couldn't remove <laughs> anyway. Okay, I'm gonna have to try and refocus my mind. I should have planned this out, alas. So this is what we are working with today. It's not great, but it's fine. It's pretty cool. I take it back. I like it. I actually recorded this main pad with the Arturia Mini Freak, which I'm loving right now. I'm going to make a full in-depth tutorial about that very shortly. Cool. So let's start with this as a, as a starting point. I'm going to use Arturia's... <laughs> this video is not sponsored by Arturia. They did give me their plugin suite. So I am testing that. And again, I'm going to make a video about my thoughts on the whole suite kind of as a whole. So far, I'm really enjoying it. This plugin does sound really good and it's quite easy to use. But yeah, I'm going to use this as my, my example. Sometimes it's really hard to tell if compression is doing anything. So you need to make sure that you are making the level equal before and after. And one way to do that is to just look over here on the left in Studio One or whatever door you're using. Maybe it's on the mixer, but just to see where the level is before and after the plugin. It might be a little bit nullified by the fact that this is linked. A lot of plugins don't have this link, so it just means as you crank the input, the output does not change unless you change it, which can be kind of annoying, but we'll just run with it. I'm gonna aim for about three to five decibels in reduction. I like to typically just kind of hit the first note or just one particular part to get the kind of initial reading, especially when I'm comparing volume. So let's just get this quick. Nice. Okay, that's basically the ballpark. So let's just bring this up so we have a bit of a better reading of how what the volume is looking like. So without the compressor... So it's kind of nearly touching minus 12. Oh, so I need more volume on this. You can hear that by ear though. So that's pretty good. It's pretty hard to get these kind of things perfect, especially when we're just looking at a volume curve like this. Sorry, a volume meter like this. If we use our ears without the compressor, the compressor is louder. Um, and that's partly, I think, also just the fact it's getting compressed. Now we can hear more of the sound squished together. So I think there's like a perceived loudness that's changing as well. But that's also good. That means I'm hearing what the compressor is doing. I can hear more of those lows, or at least I think I can. Anyway, this is not the best way to actually measure the volume change, in my opinion, or at least I find it less easy. The way that I like to do it personally is to use a VU meter on the master bus. So if we look at the master bus on the right, 
I've got a VU meter right at the start. Now, I use um, Klanghelm's VUMT, which was like 20 bucks. I don't know, it just it's nice. Uh, Studio One also has a VU meter, which is free. Also great, but just for this, I'm just going to keep using um, the Klanghelm one. I think that's how I say the, the company's name, Klanghelm. <laughs> so again, I'm going to do a pretty similar process to before. I'm just going to play the first note and just see where it hits. So kind of like about there, minus four. We can see that the way that the actual needle moves changes. It's overall louder. So when I play without the compressor, it kind of takes a bit of time to hit that three, or that four, sorry. So wah. Whereas with the compressor, it kind of immediately goes to four. So that's interesting. That's showing that the compression is doing something. Cool. That, that would be how I would be predominantly trying to get the level match. And this is how I do it, is I just kind of... So based on purely just like a, a meter, it, it's pretty good. That's pretty similar. Again, this does not really factor in like perceived loudness and those kind of concepts, but it's a good ballpark. Now let's just try this with drums, for instance. Drums are things that have like transients, like drums, a lot easier to measure in my opinion. So this is a distortion, kind of adding a bit of tube vibes. So without it. All right, minus two. Basically minus two on the dot. And this is actually just two different sides. Although, it's pretty similar. Anyway, I like to just keep it here, just for simplicity's sake. Let's turn this on. Oh, so it's quite a lot softer right now. And again, I'm just gonna hit, I'm just gonna start off with just the first kick. And without it. So I have quite a way to go. So let's just crank this up a little bit. So I'm hitting slightly under and this is hitting slightly over. So that's pretty good. And now we can slightly hear that distortion. It's not crazy, crazy um in your face, but there's definitely a vibe change there. And that is why we do this. So I can hear that vibe change because now listening to that, I like it. It sounds good. I feel like there's a bit more mids happening. That is how I would be matching volume. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And until the next video, have a good day, or week, or month, or years, or however long. Goodbye.